Good day everyone. Welcome to Teacher Julie channel. Hello everyone. We have our new lesson in Science 7 which is all about occurrence of tsunami. This will be the fourth quarter topic on learning competency number 7. This lesson is under the Matatag group. For the objectives, by the end of the lesson, 80% of the learners will be able to First is to explain how earthquakes result in tsunamis The second one is to realize how tsunamis devastate shoreline communities And the third one is to appreciate the importance of understanding how earthquakes result in tsunamis by answering the reflection of learning in activating the prior knowledge for the short review, the students will write T if the statement is true and F if the statement is false. What is a tsunami? So a tsunami is a series of giant waves caused by abrupt displacement of the large volume of water, often triggered by earthquakes, volcanic eruptions, or underwater landslide. So tsunami waves can travel thousands of miles across oceans at speeds of hundreds of miles per hour, becoming increasingly destructive as they approach shallow waters and coastal areas. The following are the causes of tsunami. So the first one is underwater earthquakes. So most tsunamis are caused by large earthquakes that occur beneath the ocean floor where tectonic plates collide or sleep. The second one is the volcanic eruptions. Volcanic eruptions, particularly those occurring underwater or near coastlines, can trigger tsunamis by displacing large amounts of water. The third one is landslide. So underwater landslide triggered by earthquakes or volcanic activity can cause significant water displacement and it can lead into tsunami. And the fourth one are the other events. So other events such as asteroid impacts or meteor strikes can also generate tsunamis but these are extremely rare. The following are the types of tsunami. So the first one is the local tsunami. So tsunamis that affect coastal areas close to the source of the event, often within a few hundred miles. The second one is the regional tsunami. So tsunamis that travel further than local tsunamis. So affecting the coastal areas within the larger geographical region. And the third one is the distant tsunami. So these are the tsunamis that travel travel across vast distances, often crossing entire ocean basin and impacting distant coastlines. 
the following or the tsunami waves and characteristics. So for the long wavelength, tsunami waves have extremely long wavelength, often exceeding 100 miles, which is why they are often described as walls of water. And another characteristic is the high speed. So tsunami waves can travel at speeds of hundreds of miles per hour, crossing the entire oceans within a matter of hours. And the last one is the variable height. So tsunami wave height uh, varies depending on the size of the event. So ocean deep and coastal topography with heights ranging from a few feet to several dozen feet. The following are the tsunami warning and detection. So the first one is the seismic sensor. So it is a network of seismic sensors detects the earthquake that could potentially generate tsunamis. The second one is the tide gauge. So tide gauge, it measures the changes in sea level which can indicate the presence of tsunami waves. And the third one is boyas. So boyas equipped with press, uh, pressure Pressure sensors are deployed in the ocean to detect the changes in water pressure. It is a key indicator of tsunami waves. And the last one is the warning system. So data from this sensor is analyzed and used to issue tsunami warnings to coastal communities. The following are the tsunami preparedness and response. So the first one is evacuation plans. So local communities develop evacuation plans to guide residents to save high ground in case of tsunami warning. The second one is public education. So public education campaigns raise awareness about tsunami hazard and teach individuals how to respond during the tsunami event. And the last one is the warning system. System. So tsunami warning system alerts communities about the uh, potential threats providing valuable time for evacuators. The following are the tsunami impacts and damage. So the first one is flooding, structural damage, erosion, contamination, and also the loss of life. The following are the tsunami mitigation strategies. So the first one is the seawalls. So seawalls act as barriers to reduce the impact of tsunami waves on coastal communities. The second one is breakwaters. So breakwaters absorb the energy of tsunami waves, reducing the impact of the coastal infrastructure and the third one is early warning systems so robust warning systems allow for prompt evacuations minimizing casualties and damage and the last one is land use planning so restricting development in high-risk areas minimizing the potential of tsunamis For the work example, the students will do the activity called Tsunami Simulation. And for the lesson activity, the learners can choose among the performances below focusing on the impacts of tsunami in the shoreline communities, such as jingle song, poem or spoken poetry, poster making, role playing, and brochure.